Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, it's the beginning of cuffing season, and it's time to fall in love with something that's gonna break my heart. Yep, you already clicked on the video, so you already know. It's time to talk Fuji Natura 1600, and if you're at risk for cardiac arrest, do not look up the prices on this one. Back in the day, Fuji funneled all their hot, horny energy into a film stock that totally kicked ass. A high ISO, color negative film stock with dreamy pastel colors. Sounds like a dream come true, and come true dreamy it was. I don't know what that means. I was kindly sent some of this stuff a while ago, but can never really figure out how or when to shoot it. As I mentioned before, it is a 1600 ISO film stock, which is really fast for film photography. And it's a Fuji film stock, known for its green greens and blue blues. It's what that George Ezra song is about, probably. And the part about a funeral, well, Fuji doesn't make this film stock anymore. In fact, they unceremoniously buried it in an unmarked grave and it's become quite rare ever since. But put down your hot pocket and imagine for a minute being able to shoot blue hour handheld and slaying those gorgeous Fuji blue tones. Anyway, that's not what I did as I began loading this very high ISO film in literally the brightest light that I possibly could. As I mentioned before, I was kind of at a loss, struggling to figure out how or when or where to shoot this medium rare ass film stock. It's 1600 ISO, so it'd be kind of a waste of its talents to shoot it in bright daylight. It'd be kind of like ordering a salad from Domino's. But it's also expired, and higher ISO film stocks lose sensitivity faster than lower ISO film stocks. Thus, Natura 1600 probably isn't reading at 1600 ISO anymore. Oh my god, my ass is on fire. This particular roll expired in July of 2019, a good year to invest in toilet paper. So I just took a wild shot in the dark, not literally, yet, and rated it at 1000 ISO instead, which is almost one stop up and should allow me to still work in low light quite well. Anyway, after recording a powerful and extremely phallic establishing shot for the video, I was off to the races with my own metaphor of absolute power. A Leica M6 finally paired with a 35 Summicron and loaded with Natura 1600. First impressions of Natura 1600. Quite grainy, but it's beautiful in its overall aesthetic, which kind of hurts like a double cobra titty twister strike to the nipples because it's just not around anymore and Fuji already destroyed the machinery used to make it if you believe shit that you read on the internet. I wouldn't say Natura 1600 is the most saturated film stock. The colors are a bit muted, which may be the result of expiration, but more likely is a characteristic of the film itself. The tones are just really airy and pastel, in varied cases, kind of like a greenish brown. I kind of felt like it had a similar look to Lomo Metropolis under certain circumstances. Is that sacrilegious to say? Anyway, this shot is baller as f and looks nothing like Metropolis. It kind of looks like a staged stock photo, but the lighting and colors are nice. And then Natura actually held onto the highlights in a really pleasing way. But uh oh, does this film have halation? Yeah, just about every film stock does if you push the contrast in your scene far enough. It's possible the anti halation layer on this stock is just not very strong. Anyway, the museum was really cool, and Monica totally thought so as well. But luckily for me, the lighting inside was just dim enough to justify shooting a high-speed film, which leads me to kind of an interesting point. This film stock is clearly daylight balanced. All of my photos taken under fluorescent or artificial light have this hot, sweaty orange look. Not a bad look at all, but I am curious as to why a high ISO film designed to shoot in low light would be preferable to shoot under daylight conditions. The shot is great, 
but the Natura didn't really hold onto the shadows very well and the subject of the shot was kind of lost. I distinctly remember metering for the shadows on this one too, so maybe this film is less sensitive than I thought and a lower ISO might be more applicable. Anyway, we kept wandering around and Monica was looking oh so pretty as per usual. As far as I'm aware, this film stock never existed in 120, but I think it should have. It's very grainy in 35, and 120 medium format would somewhat alleviate that. Plus, medium format lenses are slower, so compensating for that with a higher ISO makes some sort of sense. Double plus, medium format is much more of a thrill, like peeing in the sink. Whilst outside taking pictures of government buildings, which probably put me on some kind of list, I started wondering how one could replace Natura with today's stocks. I think the simplest solution is simply shooting Portra 800 or Lomo 800 and pushing it one stop. It's not a bad look by any stretch, but it's also not the pleasing Natura pastel look. That might be gone forever, like my childhood sense of wonder and imagination. Other Fuji stocks might come close to the color profile of Natura 1600, but nowhere near as close to the high ISO of it. These shots look great, especially this one that features more of that greenish brown I was talking about earlier. But you might want to sit your ass down for this next part, because I imagine you watch my videos standing up cheering or something like that. Here's a hot take. Mint chocolate chip ice cream tastes like cold toothpaste, Oppenheimer was mid, and I can kind of see why they discontinued Natura 1600. What are the potential applications for it if you really think about it? Blue hour? Sunset? Maybe? That's about it. As I mentioned before, this film is daylight balanced, so shooting it under artificial lighting will just give you a blob of tungsten orange. So you're kind of meant to shoot it outside, but when is outside low light? Nighttime? I mean, this film stock is fast, but I don't know if it's that fast. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to see Natura 1600 come back, but I'd also love to see T-Rexes and Pterodactyls come back, because that'd be pretty raw. But it just isn't going to happen, except with CGI or like some shitty Fuji film recipe. Hey, editing Jason here. Uh, somehow still in the same clothes as uh, the video. Somehow I totally forgot to mention that uh, Natura 1600 was made in conjunction with the Fuji Natura S camera, which is a point and shoot with a ultra low 1.9 aperture for ultimate low light beast mode. Or at least that's probably what Fuji was thinking when they made it. They also crammed Natura into disposable cameras instead of the default random 800 ISO stuff they usually do, which was kind of cool. Anyway, that was that for being out and about. Monica was looking like an Arizona iced tea as we rode the train home and I snapped a few shots super quick at the station.
before we get into my closing thoughts at the end of this video, I'd like to quickly thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you looking to bring your passion to the next level? Whether it's photography, cooking, travel, or microwaving taquitos until they explode, look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features the ability to craft your own corner of the internet from the ground up. All-in-one means there's no need to download plugins, patches, software updates, etc. Everything you need is right there and ready to go. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates you can choose from and furnish your new site with Squarespace's intuitive user interface that allows you to build portfolios, blogs, and even web shops. I've been using Squarespace for years and love to reorganize my entire website every once in a while for a more sleek and basic look that complements my photography portfolio much more aptly as it grows and evolves. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. If you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Overall, do I like Fuji Natura 1600? Yeah, of course. And I'm sure you do too. I mean, I'd like it a little bit better if it wasn't as pricey as Kodak Aerochrome these days, but hey, that's film photography. It's expensive and then you die. But if you're a Bitcoin billionaire, then have at it, I guess. I wouldn't really say Natura is worth the money, but if you like spending globs of cash so you can finally feel something inside, then go for it. Though likely therapy would be better for you. Natura is wonderful, and I'd strongly argue it's not really like anything else we have available at the moment. The colors are pastel in an effortless way, and the grain is okay. It's literally everywhere, but I can work with it. I guess it would be ridiculous to expect less grain on a high ISO film, but a girl can dream. I guess, in the end, what I really miss is the cool-ass snake tongue cut at the end of the roll. Let's at least bring that back. Right, everyone? Anyone?